Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. As a believer living in the last days, it is essential that we understand the authority of a believer and how to walk and operate in that authority. In this episode, I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth as we look at how to speak to our mountains and see them cast into the sea. So let's pray, let's press in, and let us receive everything that He has for us today. So Father, we come in that name, the name above all names, the name of Jesus. And I thank you, mighty Holy Spirit, so come and move. Come open our eyes to see, ears to hear, and open the Word. And Father, let us hear the Word, and that your words speak loudly and boldly into our lives. Let it be the voice of authority. And I thank you, mighty Holy Spirit, teach us how to walk in true authority in these days, so that Jesus, you might be glorified in all that we say, do, and think. In the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. Now, as we start, I want to so remind you that Jesus expects us to pray, pray to the Father, and expects us to see our prayers answered. And in the answering of our prayers, He is glorified. Now, in Mark chapter 11, Jesus, our great role model, begins to share with the disciples lessons in faith. And He says this in verse 22 through 24. He says, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt it in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever thing you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And I want to add something else just to help us better understand what we're talking about today. So if you'll go to Matthew chapter 8, we see the story of the centurion who has this servant um, and asks Jesus to come heal his servant. Jesus willingly agrees to come, but the servant says, no, I am not worthy. And in verses 8 through 10 of Matthew 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I am also man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. And he goes. And to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. So Jesus aligns this man's understanding of authority and the communicating and the releasing of that authority through words as an example and demonstration of great faith. Smith Wigglesworth said this, He that believeth, what a word! God's Word changes us, and when we enter into fellowship and communion, into faith, assurance, and godlikeness, for we saw the truth and believed. Faith is an operative power. God opens the understanding and reveals Himself. And what we have to understand here, as we look at that story of the centurion, it's really about what authority that we come under is the authority that we operate with. And it's the authority that we come under and receive into our heart that is demonstrated in the authority of the words that we come and communicate with our mouth. Many people have learned how to fabricate a confession. They've learned how to follow the rules. And they will pray. And they may even pray what sounds so beautiful and such a perfect prayer, and yet it bounces off the walls and hits the ceiling, and it doesn't do anything. You look and you've studied faith, and you've looked at the promises, and you're agreeing on the promises, and you pray, 
you give it everything you've got and somehow it doesn't seem to work and so you determine that your faith is simply not great enough and you've blown it i love what jesus explained in that statement the key is have faith in god understanding what that means and it is a it's emphasized once again in the story of the centurion. He explained that Jesus, you are a man under authority, the authority necessary to heal my servant. He recognized that the one that Jesus came under had the power and he had the ability to heal the servant. And so he understood that because Jesus came under that authority, his words, carried the authority of the one who was able so that the circumstances the situations such as the servant being sick the servant being unable were overcome by the greater authority see it's all about authorities on this earth what authority is loudest what authority is boldest in your life and we've been so trained to walk according to the natural that we are convinced that that which we see that which we feel that which we touch is real yet paul explains it is temporary and passing and there's something of a greater truth and that of course is the word smith wigglesworth said jesus drew the hearts of the people to himself they came to him with all their needs and he relieved them all he talked to men, he healed the sick, relieved the oppressed, and cast out demons. They came to Jesus because they saw in Jesus one who had authority that was greater than whatever oppressed them, greater than whatever they were being faced with, whatever problem that had them so entangled and held bound. We see the woman with the issue of blood who had done all that she can. She had gone to these doctors for 12 years. She had given everything, tried everything, went to every authority. But then she hears about Jesus. And there was a difference because she heard about these doctors who might be, who could try. And of course, we know that doctors practice. And she looked at all these authorities who try. But in Jesus, she saw one whose words carried such power that not one person who came to him left without the need being met, without the healing being received, without the breakthrough, breakthrough coming forth. And she saw that, and she thought about it, and it grew in her until she came to such a place that she could not allow nothing to stand in the way with her that she had to touch the hem of his garment the place of his authority see when something in us gets so big it stirs an action and we see that the woman kept saying to herself because of that which was in her Smith said the works that I shall do he shall do also he that believeth on me the essence of divine life is in us by faith he that believeth he it will come to pass. We become supernatural by the power of God. If you believe the power of God, if you believe the power of the enemy cannot stand, sorry, if you believe the power of the enemy cannot stand, for God's word is against him. And it all comes down to this place where we finally surrender to the word being final authority. We finally come to the place where the Spirit of God opens our eyes to see in the secret place of His presence. And we see Him face to face and we understand that His Word does not return to Him void. That His Word created all things. Now think for one moment. That God created all things by declaring it through His Word. He carried the authority to create all things. And then His words took that and conveyed his authority, took what was in him and demanded it be so, that everything had to so obey what he said because his words carried such authority. When someone came to him sick, his words healed them. 
When the storms arose, his words stopped it. He spoke to the mountains and commanded all circumstances to bow to the authority. The authority of the Lord God, strong and mighty. The Lord tells us that his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And he reveals them to us through the word. Not through a head knowledge of the word. And many abide in a place rich in a head knowledge. But when the word is truly final authority, it breaks you. It makes you. It produces in you the character of the authority of the word. And we'll talk about that another day. It produces in you the confidence so that you're not fabricating authority, but you're walking in it. In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, Jesus said, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And the word evil there is the Greek word poneros, and it means full of labors, annoyances, hardships, pressed and hardships by labor, full of perils. So we can see the cares, the worries, the symptoms, all these things of life get so filled in the heart to the place of an abundance. Oh, when you are going through a storm, that's a financial storm or some major sickness, it's all you think about. Because it is such an authority that it speaks to you of your destruction. It speaks to you and tells you that your end is near. It speaks to you how it has you. And all the things that it's taking from you. And as it continues to speak, it develops, it keeps sowing itself into your heart. Until your heart is filled with that thing in an abundance. And you are taken by the bad report. Just like the children of Israel, when the 12 spies went into the land, 10 of them saw and truthfully reported what they saw, but the wrong thing was. They received what they saw as the final authority. Not what God said. Not that the land is exactly as the Lord God said, therefore let us go. But what they saw became the symptoms, the circumstances became the authority. And that they saw themselves in light of their circumstances, in light of those things that they declared final authority and not the Lord God. They had lost sight of all the great and mighty works God had done to demonstrate how all these natural things about to are, are, are taken over by and his authority is greater. How he could destroy the whole Egyptian army. How he could split the Red Sea and bring them through in dry land. Great mighty miracles. Supernatural miracles beyond natural minds reasoning power to understand. So that they could trust and know that he was with them. And that what he said he would do. And when he says in the land this is what it's going to be like. But I'm going with you. And I will give you the victory. But they go in the land, and it is exactly as the Lord says. But they are more moved by what they saw and not what they heard from the Lord. And that came to such a place that it was in abundance. See, there are many people have learned how to fabricate such a perfect confession. That they can say it correctly. They have disciplined themselves in front of believers. But you can fabricate a confession, but it's what you know and have truly that you believe in your heart, that you speak, and those words carry the authority of what's authority in your heart that makes a difference. I remember when I first graduated university, I became a high school teacher, a college teacher, and it was hell. Those first few weeks, months were terrible. I went in there, and I tried everything to enforce my authority on these rebellious children, teenagers. And it's really hard when you face a teenager when they stand up and they're bigger than you. They're stronger than you. And they stand together. And you have nothing. 
And I would go and I'd ask, what authority backs me? And there was nothing they could do. And I began to pray and someone came to me and said, you have to understand authority. And it starts by coming in fully prepared. It's the time behind the scenes. And I'm going to say that to you. It's the time behind the scenes, seeking his face till you know who he is. Have faith in God. That you know who he is to you. And then you get the revelation of who you are in him. Because when you stand knowing who you are in him, the way you walk, the way you talk is different. And you come in prepared because you know exactly what you are going to do. You know exactly how to have the class planned, prepared. This is what we are going to do. This is what we're going to accomplish. And I made it clear. I came in differently. I came in with a different mindset and a heart set. And as I did so, the Lord began to teach me. And now I fully understand it. And it's the same thing. That's why when I come and I spend the time in the secret place to know Him, as Smith said, to have that fellowship, the communion, that faith. Oh, we get these eyes that see, ears to hear the Word, and the Word now speaks a different way. And I hear it. And that voice of the Word becomes louder than my circumstances, louder than my situation, and I know who He is. I know what He's saying. And I know who I am. Smith said, Shouting won't cast out an evil spirit, but there is an anointing that is gloriously felt within and brings the act of casting out the demon into perfect harmony with the will of God. We cannot help shouting, though shouting won't do it. The power over evil spirits is the ministry of the knowledge that he is Lord over all demons, over all powers of wickedness. See, many people again try to fabricate it. And they think that maybe if they're louder or bolder, they do it this way or that way. And they try to fabricate authority. And it doesn't work. But there's something different when I know it. Sometimes authority is revealed in a shout. But sometimes... It is simply revealed in the knowing. When I was a manager and I understood and I had to walk with an authority, I had an expectation that when I said something, it would be done, just like the centurion. And if it wasn't, there was an immediate action. Because see, when we don't understand authority, when there's not the response that there's supposed to be, we tolerate, and we've so long, we've tolerated the enemy. We have tolerated sickness, disease, lack, and what all these things of the enemy because we thought, I don't have enough faith. When in reality, we lost sight in the secret place of coming to the place where we truly see him and we understand that he abides in us and with us. And what he says is true. And we therefore make the stand and say, no. We say no to the devil and we stop giving him room. We want to walk with an authority. We want to be able to tell the devil to go. But at the same time, we allow him in. We allow our lives to be unholy, to walk in certain sins that we like. And then we want to be able to stand up to the same devil and tell him to go. You can't have your cake and eat it too. To walk with an authority, Jesus must be that authority. We have to understand that and get the revelation and then who we are and how to walk in that authority. There are requirements. There are expectations that we walk holy, that we walk right, and that that authority is then communicated by our words and by our attitudes, and by our body language. Because when someone's speaking, somebody with authority speaks, it is seen not just in their words, but it is seen in their actions. It's seen in their attitude. It's seen in their body language. And it's seen 
in their words. Their words are often few and they're directed. They're aimed right at the mountain that stands in the way. And it tells the mountain exactly what they want the mountain to do. See, when we don't have true authority, we've lost sight. We don't understand the perfect will of the Lord to stand with the confidence and to know what that will is so that when we speak to the mountain, we tell the mountain to do exactly what the Lord tells it to do. Smith ten on to say, If you believe, the power of the enemy cannot stand, for God's word is against him. Jesus gives us his word to make faith effectual. Whatsoever you desire, if you can believe in your heart, you begin to say, Whatever you dare to say shall be done. You shall have whatsoever he saith after he believes in his heart. Dare to believe and then dare to speak. For you shall have whatsoever you shall say if you doubt not. And we know faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. Faith that has that confidence in God's authority. And who he is. And that he has given us his name. So that his purposes can be accomplished in our lives so that we can pray forth His will and see that purpose birthed on the earth. It's not so that we can do and have the things that we so desire of the flesh, but our lives should be so consumed in Him that He is absolute authority in the secret place, that there should not be one desire in you outside of His perfect will. There's a place that we are to so walk and come to, that we are so His, that every thought and desire is after Him. And we desire the things that He desires because His way is perfect. His will for our life is absolute the best. And we know that. And so that we now stand in a place where there's nothing of the enemy that we will tolerate. There's nothing of the enemy that we allow. We want to walk in divine authority of healing. and You know, be able to walk and see sickness and disease go. But we tolerate sickness. We say we will pray with these people one way, but in our lives believe another. And it's time that we came into the secret place of His presence. And we were no longer double-minded, but we wholly bow to the authority of His words and say, teach me how to walk in your ways. Wholly submitted, wholly consecrated, wholly yours. So that my words, my thoughts, my attitudes. See, this is the preparation time. Walking in authority requires the preparation time. Spent in the secret place, abiding in His Word, because faith comes by the Word. And the Word must be the loudest voice. Not what someone says about the Word. Not what you heard or your opinion. But the very Word should stir up, should become so loud, Those promises should arise and cause you to stand that when the devil would dare trespass into the territory that belongs to the Lord God and dare challenge the things of God, that your spirit man rises up and says, No, for it is written, just like the Master did. And we say and declare not to debate, not to argue with, because Jesus did not argue with the devil. When he tried to tempt him, he told the devil. He made a statement, a declaration of absolute authority. And see, when someone speaks with authority, you know it. When you meet true authority, you know it. And there's no playing games. There's no pushing back. You have met authority and you know it. Smith explained and gave an example of how to walk with authority. And he said, one day a pet dog followed a lady out of her house and ran all around her feet. She said to the dog, my dear, I cannot have you with me today. The dog wagged its tail and made a big fuss. She said, go home, my dear. But the dog did not go. At last, she shouted roughly, go home. And off it went. Some people deal with the devil like that. The devil can stand all the comfort you like to give him. Cast him out. 
You're not dealing with the person. You're dealing with the devil. Demon power must be dislodged in the name of the Lord. You know, if you were to look at the actual Greek, where Jesus told the devil, get behind me. He didn't just say as a suggestion, but he made a statement using the ongoing presence, stating to him, get behind me and keep getting behind me. There's no room for you. There is no place for you at this table. There's no room for you in my presence. You go and you keep going. You never come back. You go. And we have to get to that place where it is a final no. It is a final no. Because Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And when you walk with authority, we get to that place of confidence. Where we spent the time in the word, building line upon line, precept upon precept that we might know His will. And our spirit man, with eyes opened, understanding and walking in the revelation of the Word, rises up and says, How dare this devil challenge and taunt a child of the living God. Under the blood-bought covenant, how dare this devil taunt a child and the one who has a right to the blessings and heir and a co-heir in Christ. A one who has an open triumph, and they stand up. And like David, they run to the battle with the authority, with an expectation that this devil is falling this day. That this day it is over. And their words, and their attitude, and their actions are in whole harmony, in an absolute agreement. And they do that which they say, and they say that which they do. Smith said, some people will be giants in the faith if they only had a shout. Not a fabricated, manufactured shout, but a shout that comes from every fiber of their being. A shout forged in the fire of the secret place of His presence and in His Word. A, a, a faith that's built upon the confidence, knowing that He is, and He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. One that knows his will and stands up and knows how the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy and recognizes that Jesus came to destroy the enemy, to destroy his works and to see people set free. And there's a fire that stirs in them, a shout that rises where we understand now who he is and who we are and everything in us aligns, aligns with that. And there's a shout that comes, a harmonious shout, a shout that comes in every word, thought, action, and deed, declaring the purpose and the will of the Lord. Let me finish with this. Smith said, you must learn to take the victory and shout it in the face of the devil. It is done. There is no man who can doubt if he learns to shout. Shout, get behind me, Satan, and you will have the best time on earth. Whisper, and you won't. So many people, because they have not come to the place of sold out confidence, of knowing that they know, they're not confident enough to shout, to dare speak to their mouths, and know that they'll move. They're willing to put on a show in front of other believers to be seen. But they're not willing to stand when all are watching and to declare that this day, watch and see the salvation of my God. They're not willing because they have not been so baked and made in the secret place until they've discovered that Jesus is their salvation and He becomes more real to them and His presence abides in them and with them. And the Word has become their life breath. Their, the word of the living God is in every fiber of their being. Oh, I pray that in the name of Jesus, this message shakes you. This message so stirs you, provokes you, that you would get into the secret place and you would stay there until you know Him. And you will abide in His word until His word abides in you. And you know who He is and who you are in Him. And then you get a shout, a shout confessed with the mouth, a shout confessed 
with the thoughts, confess with your attitude, confess with every action, a shout that declares that the will of the Lord be done and calls it forth and calls it so. A shout that speaks to the mountain, that there stands in the way and taunts you like a Goliath and says, this day you fall, this day you go into the sea because my God says so. I really pray that this mess blesses you and stirs you so that in this, this, this year as we stand so close to his return and the spiritual warfare has intensified, you stand with a greater confidence, a greater boldness, knowing his will, knowing who he is and knowing who you are, knowing your assignment and making that stand because there are lives at stake and we need to stand up and arise and shine. I thank you for watching this message. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, if it's blessed you, encouraged you, strengthened you, that in the name that you would so like, share, subscribe, and give your comments. Because as you do, you truly help us in this hour to, to reach more backsliders and to see more believers rising up and living boldly for Jesus in this hour. And I thank you. And I would ask, if the Lord puts in your heart, would you become a prayer partner with us? Stand with us. And if God puts in your heart to be a financial partner, thank you. For more, informa for, for more information, please go to robertpairs.org and go to the partner page. And if you don't have a church right now and you're looking for one, consider joining our online services while you're looking to get a now word, a right word, a word that will feed your spirit and encourage you. For more information, go to robertpairs.org and go to the About page and go to church. I just want to bless you. I want to encourage you. And I want to remind you that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad because through and for Him. In that name, that is above all names, the name of Jesus we pray. And everyone said, Amen and amen. Thank you.